As Season 8 approaches, developer interviews have given us more insight into this update and loads more questions have been answered. So then, we have got a ton more questions answered and information about Season 8. There's only two days to go now, so there's really not that long to wait until the biggest update ever. Let's kick things off with PvP. Well, more specific than that, because the whole update's based around PvP. <laughs> but what happens after a fight? Do the crew stay in the same server, or what happens there? Because then the winning ship would be vulnerable, and the losing ship could just go back for them. Well... The losing crew will get migrated to a new server, and the winning team will stay in the server that they fought the other team in. They call this internally the loser tunnel, which is quite funny, and the best way to describe it apparently is if you play an arcade game, then it's game over if you lose, you just get a game over screen. So this is going to be the game over screen of Sea of Thieves. There will also be skill-based matchmaking, and that will happen inside the, I say the tunnels of the damned, the Tunnels of Water? Apparently there's incredible music and sound effects there, and especially when you resurface, the crescendo it builds and builds and builds. It's some of the best music in the game, and it is faction specific. Some more information which I loved was that apparently when you're underwater in the, the what should we call them? The Tunnels of Underwaterness? I don't know, anyway. When you're underwater, you can catch sight of the Kraken or see Megalodon swimming, and they keep that immersion and storytelling that the game does so well, even in the PvP side of things, which I think is really good. Just like when you travel through the Tunnels of the Damned in the Tall Tales, it's really atmospheric. But obviously, this is something you're going to be doing much more often, which I think is really cool. Another thing that the developers love about this update is there's a real sense of one more to go, a battle royale style thing. Apparently fights are 15 minutes on average, and so it's one of those things that you, know, you can just keep going right at the end of a session, or if you sink, then you can keep going, because currently in the game, if you sink, that's it. I'll be honest, if I sink, I generally hop onto another game, if I keep sinking or whatever. Generally speaking, the point is you really lose that motivation, but with this update, it can keep it all going, and it's not at the expense of the sandbox. You can always have a short session sandbox. They went on to say that it's no coincidence that the decision point was well, what it was. They want everyone to have a sense of picking a side, the skeletons of Reapers versus the ghosts of Athena, but they then went on to talk about the new environments. With the expansion to Athena's fortune, there's a new entrance, and there's a beautiful cutscene that you'll get. You meet some of those beloved characters face to face. With the Reapers, you get that sense of pirate legend moment again when you open up the trap door. Again, there's loads of new NPCs there. But in both of them, they have some of the most narrative moments in Sea of Thieves. You really get a sense of achievement when you shake hands with the Pirate Lord or get the Skeleton Curse. The environments themselves, apparently they're some of the best work that the team have ever done. It's almost like seeing this hidden world that you've never seen before, with all of these new wonderful characters. Skeleton Curse questions now, you can customise the head torso, lower bodies, and new colours of it, of the bones. But you can't use your own clothes with the Skeleton Curse. This you can kind of understand, although I do know that some people might get a little bit annoyed by this. Your pre-existing cosmetics do apply to the Ghost Curse though, so, you know, that's alright I guess. The next thing they said is that this PvP stuff takes place in the shared world of adventure. Well, obviously, but other crews can join the fight. This is interesting because they're not going to be limited by the boundaries, only you and the opposing crew are. You can defend as well in this update, you can play the game as you always do, PvE. You just have to be on guard, that's what they said about when asked when the gold stuff, because obviously you can have a gold multiplier, build up a gold streak depending on the amount of treasure on your boat, so you can play PvE normally if you want to. You get more emissary grade for sinking rival ships as well, so if you're really struggling on that last bit of Athena or Reaper grade, just dive and well, be good <laughs> and uh, sink someone. What is interesting though is that if you get invaded by another faction and you defend your ship with honour and sink the opponent, you'll gain more allegiance for your faction based on the amount of treasure you have on your boat because you'll be increasing your treasure grade with the more treasure you put on your boat as I just mentioned a second ago. Something small to mention is that Reapers can't run anymore. <laughs> If you dive and you get faced against a reaper, as loads of loot, they can't run, because if they run, they're going to get exploded. 
Another thing is that aligning in a faction is not permanent for those who it was unclear to. If you sync, you leave your faction and you can leave your faction at any time. Meaning you can unlock both curses and there's a new system called the SPG. For those who are familiar with the infinite pirate generator, IFPG or whatever it is, IPG. This is the skill and pirate generator, so you know, new system. Season 8 is also why they didn't introduce PvP alignments to Season 7 if that wasn't clear because for Captaincy there's obviously two new alignments coming. Allegiance is separate to trading companies. This is something to note again if it was unclear. They've not just raised the cap of Athena to 100, they're not going to make you grind out 3,000 Legend of the Veils. A question that I've seen come up and I'm glad they answered is about matchmaking. If you're on a solo sloop, will you be matched against only solo sloops or will you be matched against duo sloops as well? And the answer to this is yes. A solo sloop will be matchmaked against another solo sloop and can't be vice versa unless they opt into that. Each ship you sink, your streak also goes up, and therefore you build a streak multiplier. This maxes out at streak level 4. The cap of your streak is uncapped though. Therefore, that kind of means that if you sink a ship, say 5 ships, your streak level is 5, but your multiplier can only go up to 4. So you could be at streak level 10, but your multiplier will always be at 4, because that's where it caps at. When you hit level 4, or streak multiplier 4, you become a champion of your faction. And this means you can take on bigger ships, but only when you've sunk four ships prior to that. Based on your streak, the effects on the front of your boat to on the bow and the figurehead also grow more intense as your streak goes up, presumably also maxing out at four in terms of how many levels of effects they are. This makes sense now as in various clips we've seen different levels of intensity and almost we haven't really noticed it before, but now it is definitely clear that obviously there's different levels, as I've said, based on your streak. Nice touch, pretty small, but we'll take it. Anyways, that does just to wrap everything up. Season 8 is going to be phenomenal. That's everything they've answered, but I cannot wait until Tuesday because this update is the biggest update to Sea of Thieves yet. Yeah, undisputed so far, I think everyone's been saying it. It's bigger than Anniversary, arguably, because to be honest with you, the Anniversary update, it seemed a bit, not lackluster now, but compared to what they do now, I mean, say compare it to Season 8, I mean, what did they have fundamentally? The Nine Tall Tales was the biggest thing, the arena, but that's now gone. Two new companies, but they were kind of lackluster companies. Well, I say the Hunter's Call especially. They had a bunch of quality of life stuff, but I just don't think it's on par with the level of quality we can get now. The only other contender is a pirate's life, but that was big in its own way. For the game, I wouldn't necessarily say that was the biggest. So, I don't know, but I definitely think this upcoming update is the biggest one yet. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy them, please do consider leaving a like. It really helps out the channel an absolute ton. And subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest Sea of Thieves news as and when it comes out. While you're at it, why not hit the bell as well so you never miss a single upload. But anyways, apart from all that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.